Hello. Back. And let's get back to it. Um So <laughs> before the break, we were done. Uh what's left to do here? I mean besides, you know, more sweeping changes, addressing kind of the, the to-dos that I left in the front end about not passing this information to the front end, um, which I will address at some point. Um, there's definitely things that we could think about refactoring here. One idea. An upload, an upload in uh, one of our handlers, like an add video to playlist handler. Uh, no, that's not handler. Uh, wherever it is, again, the uh, the outline is. Empty. <laughs> uh, let's collapse everything. There we go. Uh, what's the warning here? Oh, we don't use this anymore. All right. Well, there's something. Of that um, like in uh, upload start task handler there we go here's something where we use this access token um, struct uh, which is an extractor uh, in axum uh, terminology if there is a way to hello congratulations brainless society months. just subscribed for nine months oh look it's a baby it's a baby thank you for the resub how has your sunday been going uh brainless Uh, I was thinking about, can we make kind of a general purpose extractor where we tell it the kind of token it is, like it's a YouTube one or it's a Twitch one? Just woke up, so good. Uh, yeah. Well, maybe, you know, what what uh, what side of the bed did you wake up on? <laughs> the good side? Uh, let's see. Oh, there we go. So, uh, do I have a link to the Rust docs? There we go. So this enum thing, it's 2 p.m. Just to... <laughs> I see, I see. So I got some good sleep, I hope, <laughs> out of that. Uh, if I wanted to know about more about structs, that under data types. Uh, compound types, the tuple type, we've seen that. The array type. Uh, the. Okay, it doesn't talk about structs there. Using structs, here we go. Defining and instant instantiating structs. So. Here's one kind of struct, but this isn't the kind of struct that we're doing here, where we're defining this um, as just being a thing that has a secret string inside of it, right? Where is it? Where is the nomenclature? Using the field init shorthand, because the parameter names and the struct field names are exactly the same in listing 5.4, uh, this is listing by four. Oh. What's the difference here? Uh, oh, the shorthand. Right. This is the same thing in TypeScript where you can uh, uh, say username instead of username, colon username. 
Uh, what am I looking for, though? Tuple structs without named fields to create different types. Okay, so tuple structs or tuple structs, however you like. Uh, Brainless says I began playing the next update on the roadmap beta for Mind Over Magic last night. Interesting, interesting. Is it is it good? Is it better? Is there more content? Uh, okay, so tuple structs, similar to tuples, um, have added meaning. Uh, have the added tuple structs have the added meaning. Oh, have the added meaning that the struct name provides, um, but don't have names. I mean, you don't say that, but uh, don't have names associated with the fields. Rather, they just have the types of the fields. They're useful when you want to give the whole tuple a name and just make the tuple a different type from other tuples. And when naming each field as in a regular struct would be verbose or redundant. Did I see the roadmap? Don't want to give a spoiler. I have not seen the roadmap. So, uh, I guess maybe a different way of going about looking at this is looking at the Axum docs. Okay, yes, more content. Great. <laughs> uh, I guess I'll find out someday. Uh, so, when we're making an extract, Making an extractor. See there, there's an example. Customize extractor error. Um, serve templates. Okay, let's try looking at this. Custom extractor error. Custom extractor.rs. We define our own JSON extractor that customizes the error. So that looks like this. It's on T, pub T. Um, is it possible? I guess, I guess what I could do is effectively make two extractors. Oh, I can opt in in their Discord. Do I want to join another Discord? I have so many. <laughs> I can make two structs. I can make a YouTube access token and a Twitch access token struct. Uh, I guess. Okay, that, that's gonna be more work. Where you can send the code, it's not secret. Uh, maybe, maybe. Think about that. Uh, is their Discord linked on their Steam page? Or how would I find that? I think for now though, I'm not gonna try to consolidate the, um, the uh, access token handling stuff between YouTube and Twitch. Let's do this. It's, um, what have we changed so far? We changed a bunch of stuff on the front end. To make it compatible. Uh, hold on. There. Oh yeah, there's some stuff we don't need here. Cool. So what have we changed? Uh, got rid of some redundant stuff. Got rid of that. Updated that. I suspect that we may not have saved like lines of code uh, converting like this, but at least a lot of the logic is now uh, not stuff that I've implemented. So if I were to do this, how would you? Uh, no, I don't know why it does that sometimes. It's just way off about what's going on. Um, Finish converting. Uh, 
uh, the converting uh, YouTube RS to use um, OAuth to great. <laughs> All right, I'll commit that. They have two links, wish list and Discord. All right, I'll check that out. All right, so then we did a bunch of front end things to uh, yeah, yeah. update front end to pass through the uh, value, new values for YouTube. All right, so if I push all this up, what do we think is gonna be the net change of lines of code on this pull request? Uh, yeah, so it was a 300 line gain. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's fine. Hey, Satanic God, one, two, four, five. Thank you for the follow. Satanic God, 1245 just followed. 1245. Uh, RTX. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, RTX 4070 Ti? Uh, oh, Ryzen 9. Um, I do like Blender. I've not, I've never used Maya, uh, or really done anything with Unreal, but, uh, I don't know. Um, I don't know these days, you know, I'm sure there are like minimum specs for each of those things and recommended. Um, like Blender has been, been around a long time and it's really going to de depend on what you're trying to do inside of Blender itself. But I imagine you're gonna want high specs for Unreal if you, I mean, depending on what you're doing, right? Is, is ultimately the answer to that. Um, I think in my, like my bio on Twitch, I have hardware specs uh, for my machine, which again, I don't use Blender a whole lot. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's me streaming, go away. Stop it. Uh, about. Uh, about. It's about. Take me to a full screen. Okay, there we go. Uh, give me a piece. I am a Corden i9 9900K. And. Uh, RTX 3090. No TI. Is that true? Did I? Yeah, I guess that's what I'm on. <laughs> I forget. It's good enough for me. I have way more hard drives now than when I when I put this on here. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well. I I did some of that. I guess we can do the, the Twitch side of it. Maybe at that point it will become more obvious to me. What I want to consolidate. There's a lot of duplication here. I wonder. Let's do this. Um, so if I just look at this part. I do. Don't I have a select for compare? Do I not have that extension? I guess I don't. Okay, let's do this. We'll just do paste that. So that was from Twitch, right? And then the YouTube version. Is in here somewhere. I 
I... active file with this one there we go so what's different besides the line uh, here we're actually specifying the type of redis error um, we're calling YouTube uh, Right, the only difference between these is the actual function it calls to get the access token uh, and um, the access to hmm, excuse me the access token key is different between these two um, I wonder if there is a way to parameterize the extraction in a way that would help here greenless says one note about the beta well you'll see it on the discord announcement they recommend to use an existing game uh, as the content is mid to late game but the save might become unusable to due to breaking changes I was able to get to the new content in about five hours. I see. I see. So, I don't know. It's really tempting to figure out if we can reuse this these bits of code. The key thing is going to be like, um, So what I could do is I could make separate structs, YouTube access token, uh, Twitch access token, and then provide separate implementations. And then the actual content of this method could be moved into a function where I pass in the kind of access token it is and the function to use to refresh the access token or something like that. So what's in refresh access token, right? So we need to know what client it is. And we need to know um, where the refresh token is stored. Okay, I have some ideas. Some ideas. Um, let's make a new file uh, under SRC. Call it OAuth RS, uh, which means in main.rs. Add mod OAuth. Yep. And I'm going to start plucking things out of YouTube.rs and moving them, moving them into OAuthRS. And we'll try to just figure out how to make general purpose things. I probably am not going to be able to move everything, but we'll, we'll see. Let's see what we can do. Uh, it's like Get Google uh, OAuth client, for example. I probably don't want to put that in OAuth RS. Like that's going to be the client that's specific to YouTube. Um, I could potentially move things that use a client into OAuth RS and kind of have that general purpose thing. If, um, I don't know, what can we do? So one thing I could potentially do is this part where we are 
saving access token and the refresh token. I could move into a separate function. Yeah. So like this section here could be moved to its own function. If I do that, then nothing else here needs Redis. So I could actually move the connection setup stuff there as well. And for that matter, I could just take this whole section, make a function that's responsible for taking the token response and syncing it to Redis. I would need to parameterize the keys. So if we refactor, extra, oh, not extract to a variable, uh, let's, do this um, save yeah save tokens to Redis I probably don't want to send the whole state let's do this uh, pub async fun uh, what, what was it called <laughs> save tokens to Redis save tokens to Redis uh, yeah, something like that, but not exactly. I'll worry about the types in a minute. So we're going to get a token response. And we're going to get um, a Redis client. And we're going to get a refresh token key and an access token key. Um, let's do pub struct access, uh, for key keys, <laughs> uh, Redis token key storage, I like storage. Yeah. Keys names are hard. Uh, Do I want this? I, I probably actually want to have this, but it's going to be key. Look, we're, we're not running short on bytes here. We can, we can give it a whole name. Uh, we can call this keys. Uh, and we're going to need to add types to this, but I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, we do want a return type, which is going to be a uh, result of something. Uh, we get rid of state dot um, type for Redis client is yeah something like that actually token response yeah we should be qualifying that as a lot two token response all right and we're gonna change. Uh, the returns here to return just the, an error wrapping a string rather than uh, our accent error. How do you feel about that? Okay, so now um, Should make it a little easier to see where the errors are. So calculate access token TTL. Uh, we're gonna move that over to this new module. We are missing. Saving 
that needs to be imported. So we don't have to specify that anymore. All right. So then we have to do the same thing here. We're gonna have generics. takes one generic argument where two provided. Ah. I want to use the general. What is the difference between standard token response and token response? is that standard token response is a struct token response is a trait so tt is token type okay access token cannot be invoked on a trait object uh, right. So then that's something where we do something like this. Nope. <laughs> okay. Um, maybe I will change this back then and we'll use uh, the actual struct. Uh, 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 standard token response. It. Make you happy? Happier? All right, so now we need the refresh token key. It's that. We need the access token key. It's that. All right, now we have a general purpose uh, function to uh, save the access and refresh tokens to Redis um, from the token response. That means, uh, there we go. Here, we need to uh, we can import it, we can qualify it, I'll qualify it. It's actually state dot uh, Redis client. And then we need to pass in Redis token storage keys. <laughs> that. Um, I guess if I'm going to do this, one thing I could do is instead of having these constants like freestanding, um, I could refactor that to be like more like const uh, token keys equals that. Except I would. Can those be string slices? Uh, they can be. I think I have to change this to be, um, like that. Say that the strings inside of the struct have the same lifetime. Uh, if I do that, then do I have to do that everywhere. Uh, right, and then.
for this, I can simply pass in token keys. Now, what's it complaining about? Mismatch types. Expect this struct to walk to standard token response underscore underscore. Bound reference. Um, thing, thing, thing. So this is currently for providing a, oh, I see. Let me just do that then. Let's see what Flippy thinks. Okay. Uh, and then similar deal here, we can do uh, token keys. Uh, we want the refresh token. Oops. Oh, okay. There we go. All right, so where? Uh, I, guess, I guess I closed that file. Where are we? Um, where did I get this code from? Not there, right? Oh, yeah, I moved it. Right, 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 right. I moved it. Okay. So. Uh, what else can we move? a thing IRL So, what else can we move? What else is there? So we have this stuff to uh, get the OAuth client. It's very like, it needs to know the details about this config that's specific to YouTube. Um, there's probably a way we could make this general purpose, but I'm gonna leave that as is. Login handler, we're getting the client, we're doing some checks. Uh, what's the problem here? Uh, oh, we need to handle the error. <laughs> that's the error. That's the that's the that's the issue. We do need to handle uh, if there's an error or not. If there's an error, um, well, this is already going to trace, so we just need to give a 500 error. Otherwise, we uh, are good. Alternatively, at this point. What I could really do is do this and uh, this, get rid of that in the semicolon, and then just have this be the thing that determines the response. Uh, I think the issue with this is that it makes this special. It makes this something that is it's just one other step that we're doing here but it in, entwines in it the idea of what the final response status is it's like what does the whole thing return but also saving you know it's one step of the process and intertwining it with what the whole thing is supposed to return so i think i like this better um Okay, moving on. Is there anything else? So here we're connecting to Redis. We are getting the refresh token. And all of this. Could this function be made more general purpose? Like if we pass the OF client to refresh to the function, we'd also have to pass um, a struct with the 
Redis token storage keys to it. Um, similarly to what we did for save tokens to Redis, but this could be made more general purpose. Yeah, I like that. So let's let's try doing that. We're gonna move this to o op to RS as a public async function, and uh, we're gonna change parameters a bit. So we're gonna take uh, the Redis client. Like so we're gonna take the o op two client. I'm going to take the, uh, what do we call the parameter? Uh, keys. Yep. And is there anything else? We don't need to do this anymore. We just have the client passed into us. Uh, there could be an error as it turns out. So let's uh, allow for the possibility of a string error, I guess. anything secret is a thing that doesn't uh it's not imported i'll just import it token keys is actually just keys refresh token is not a thing we know about here we need to import that token keys here should be keys so this is good a warning uh, yeah, we're not using it. That's fine. Back over here, uh, wherever I just yoinked that. Oh, right, right, right. So if I if I save this, some stuff we are not needing anymore. We should have an error look like right there. Um, so this changes. We want to uh, qualify this. Pass those parameters. I think this needs to not be a reference. Yeah. There we go. Uh, yeah, that's not. Uh, right. So now this needs to build the. Um, Um, OAuth client, but also I wonder, instead of passing Redis client here, should we just pass the connection since we have it? That's the same question of save tokens to Redis. When we call save tokens to Redis, here, we don't have a connection. Yeah, I think I'll just leave that as is for now. Um, so, in the error case, we need to build ourselves this OAuth client. Fortunately, we have a function that does that. We have error handling. If we fail to build the client, we throw uh, we result in a 500 error. Then expected. Oh, okay. It did expect a reference. Very well. All right. No warning. Well, yeah. No warnings. No errors. All good. So in general, the goal here is things that we're going to do and do basically the same way for both YouTube and Twitch 
um, which should be, you know, the stuff, right? Because we have an OA2 client that has the details of how they're different. Um, should be able to like have those things in common. We're gonna go in and swap the RS. So what else can we generify? Like maybe this whole implementation of from request parts could be moved. Um. I guess, let me go back to the, the Axum docs. I guess I never really answered the question that I had about being able to parameterize extractors. Let's create documentation, sure. Examples, tutorials. back to examples um, is there something about extractors there we go extractors so an extractor is a type that implements from requests or from request parts extractors are how you pick apart the incoming request to get the parts your handler needs uh, see extract for more details before I do that let's look at these examples right so the part that I'm interested in is the part over here so like path q32 uh, query, hash map, string, string. Um, so these are all like you pass a type that parameterizes um, a thing. Um, and then on the left hand side, at, hmm. yeah. Yeah. So let's, let's, let's take a look at this. Optional, customizing, accessing, defining custom extractors. Wrapping extractors. So, finding custom extractors. So, here we have extract user agent, where user agent is the thing that shows up inside of the handler as uh, a thing that you can look at, right? And that's type extract user agent. So extract user agent here is this type, type of this tuple struct. Um, and from request parts is the, the trait that we're implementing for the struct. We're implementing, we're providing this method from request parts. So the question that I had was, is there a way to do something here that would surface as information to vary what happens inside of from request parts. And I think probably not. At least I'm not thinking of or seeing anything that would indicate that there's a way to do that other than having different structs and uh, then having different implementations for them. Which is fine. It's just, uh, you know, my <laughs> inclination to uh, reduce the, the amount of duplication between things. But we could really take, I think, the whole of the body of this and make this a general function that would then be parameterized. It would have to 
it would likely need to be parameterized by referencing the function itself that gets the uh, the OAuth2 client. And then token keys. Um, unless we wanted to change this to always create a new OAuth2 client every time this is evaluated, and I don't think we do. Let's say I take the contents of this, make a new function. Um, okay. yeah. So pub async function. Um, is it get access token? What is the purpose of this? The purpose of this is to get an access token. Except this is not going to take an OAuth2 client. It needs to take uh, an OAuth2 client uh, builder. How do we do this? Something like that. Except it needs to take a. Um, <laughs> Something like this, maybe. And it needs to return a secret. Perhaps something like this. And what I want to do is I want to um, paste what I copied from the other function, and we'll fix this up. Like state is not a thing. We just use Redis client directly. Um, we're gonna return an error, but it's not gonna be. It's gonna be like this. Um, it's not token keys. It's just keys. Fix that where we can. All right. What else is wrong? Access token is not a thing. We're not trying to wrap that. We're just going to return the secret. Um, we're not using get Google OAuth client. We're using OAuth2 client builder. Uh, we do need the config. Um, we'll take the config and not the whole state. So far, so good. Uh, mismatch types, yeah, yeah, of course. Get rid of this. It's going to return that. Uh, we're going to change this to just be a two client. There we go. Pass in the Redis client. Uh, get rid of the HTTP specific error and just like a general string error. Uh, don't wrap it in the access token uh, tuple structs. Mismatch types. Uh, yeah, maybe. All right, because this needs to be actually a result that gives us a client. Well, you don't like that? The size for the values of type dine up in once, yada, 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 cannot be known at compile time. Use impl trait as the argument type. Impl. I M P L. Can we do that? I've not written a lot of like higher level functions like this. So. Okay. Uh, change this to config. It says. Just one warning that this is unused. It's really good. So this will get us an access token, either from Redis, if it hasn't expired, or we'll use the refresh token to get the access token. And so what I should be able to do is I should be able to remove the entirety of the implementation in here and 
just do that. And if we get it, we get it. And if not, we give an error. We don't need a match there. Bam. Uh, okay. We, we called it, I say we, mostly Copilot called it one thing in one place and there we go. Beautiful, sort of. Takes four arguments though. Uh, it takes config, and then it takes. Can I can I not just uh, do this? Is that acceptable? It did. Expected get Google OAuth client to be a function item that returns result. Whatever returns result. Uh, what's the difference here? <laughs> you spot the difference. Uh, oh, it, it actually returns parse error. We expect string. Yeah. So. Something. Can I, can I get away with that? Nope. Uh. Do something like this then. Yeah. The type alias can't be used as a trait, so that's wrong. Uh, all right, I called it F. Tries it with T. Uh, okay, so that is, I think, very similar to the thing I had before. Um, it doesn't like the fact, though, that that result has an error case that is a string, and this is a URL parse error. Um, if I call, if I have a second parameter called fr, uh, f fe. I do that. It just magically works. It's not complaining about that. It's complaining about some imports. We don't need Redis here anymore. All right. Hooray. Happy with that. <sighs> Where did the hour go? All right, well, uh, actually doing the Twitch version, this should be pretty easy um, because excluding all of the like the things unrelated to authentication, the rest should just be a matter of leveraging these functions to uh, move things along. What we can do, I think one thing I'm going to do right now is I'm going to rename the symbol. Nah, it's fine. I'm going to keep this as is. You know why? Because I'm, I'm going to have the implementation of the Axum extractor in this file for now. Because it's so simple. It's, it's, it's much more compact. And we're just leveraging get access token. And we'll be able to you know pass in get Twitch OAuth client and the, the right token keys for Twitch. Um, so it will be kind of just copy paste with just some things changed, but it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Um, what I might be tempted to do is make a separate like YouTube OAuth and Twitch OAuth for that stuff to live into live in because it's just, a, you know, it's a lot to like navigate through to find the right thing. Um, uh, 
that's an option. But I think for now we're gonna we're gonna pause here. I may, if I have some spare time, um, continue this refactoring uh, on the Twitch side uh, off stream. Let's let's commit. Yeah, super helpful message there. Um, move uh, common OAuth utils to server file, and it's basically it's basically what's going on. I'll push that up, and I'll continue to work on this branch and this pull request. Uh, as I go, but uh, you know, pretty pretty good for a couple hours. We are uh, eventually going to see this shift to be more lines removed than added once I uh, refactor the, the Twitch side of things. But uh, but yeah, I think this will be good for the moment. Uh, and I think that's going to be it for today. We're going to do a little raid. <laughs>